Hello friends, the topic for discussion today is the theory of sampling and sample size determination in social science research. So, before going to the details of theory of sampling and sample size determination, I just explain the meaning of the term research in social science. So, the meaning of the term research is search for knowledge. Scientific and systematic search for knowledge is research. In other words, a careful investigation for new facts is also research. In another words, research is a systematized effort for new knowledge. But some of the academicians says that research is a movement from the known to the unknown. So, whatever be the definition, the exact meaning of the term research is knowledge of whatever unknown. From all these definitions and from my personal experience, I would like to say the meaning of the term research as a search for new knowledge, a systematized effort for getting new knowledge or additions to an existing knowledge. But in social science research, the exact meaning of the term research is a scientific inquiry. Inquiry will be conducted by a researcher for getting new facts or new knowledge. So, that is why we should say that research is a scientific inquiry in social science subject. So, now the very basic definition of research says that research is comprising defining and redefining problem. That means the starting point of research in social science subject is the identification of a problem in a particular area and define and redefine that problem that means make the problem more clear. More and more sub problems have to be identified from the main problem. And all these are possible only through literature review. Then formulate certain hypothesis. In social science research, everything is based on certain assumptions, tentative assumptions, and such assumptions are to be validated with the data. And the tentative conclusion or tentative assumption is called hypothesis. So, hypothesis is a very base of research in social science subject. So, basically the term hypothesis means the assumed relationship between dependent variable and independent variable. Once we formulate the hypothesis with a clear cut dependent and independent variables and such hypothesis have to be validated with the data. So, data has to be collected and analyzed only for proving or validating our hypothesis, our assumed solution to the research problem. So, for that purpose data has to be analyzed and the data has been collected from the respondents. So, in this situation there will be an inquiry conducted by the researcher. The inquiry may be either census inquiry or sampling inquiry. If we collect information from all the units in the population, it is called a census inquiry. It has its own drawback. So, there is an alternative method of inquiry that is called a sampling inquiry where the research study only a part of the population. So, that is why I have already mentioned the research is a scientific inquiry. The meaning of the term research, especially in social science subject, is a systematic and scientific inquiry. Here comes the problem of sampling. If you opt a sampling study, how to select the sample from the population? So, there are several methods and techniques used for the selection of sample from the population. Such methods and techniques are called methods of sampling or techniques of sampling. 
So, basically the entire methods are classified into two probability sampling and non probability sampling. If we apply the concept of probability at the time of the selection of sample from the population, then such methods are called such techniques are called probability sampling. And in the case of non probability sampling the researcher select the sample from the population according to his own convenience, his own judgment or some other purpose. So, there are several methods coming under probability sampling. So, what is the concept of probability sampling? Every unit in the population has an equal chance of being included in the sample. So, this is the very basic idea of the application of probability at the time of the selection of sample from the population. So, based on this concept, the entire methods coming under the probability sampling are random sampling, simple random sampling, stratified random sampling, cluster sampling, double sampling and systematic sampling. So, sometimes the quota sampling and the snowball sampling are coming under the head probability sampling. But the non probability sampling techniques include convenience sampling, judgment sampling and purposes sampling. So, here I want to explain what is population. A collection of items about which some inference are to be made or any collection of items constitute population. And sample the segment of the population that is selected for investigation, it is a subset of the population. Any part of the population is a sample. So, sampling is basically the process of selecting a part of the population to make inference about some characteristics of the population. So, there are two basic assumptions or conditions under which the samples have been drawn from the population. The first condition, the parent population from where the sample have been drawn are normally distributed and the second one that sample selected will be the true representative of the population. So, based on these two conditions or assumptions, we apply different methods of sampling, especially these techniques are coming under probability sampling. So, coming to the first technique coming under probability sampling, simple random sampling. The simple random sampling is applied only when the population is finite or the population is homogeneous. If we have a finite population, definitely we can apply simple random sampling for the selection of sample from the population. At the same time, the population must be homogeneous. At the same time, if the population is heterogeneous or there is no homogeneity in the population, we can select the sample by applying stratified random sampling. So, what we will do in the stratified random sampling? In the stratified random sampling, we divide the entire population into different groups otherwise called strata. From each strata, we select required number of sample at random and also proportionately. And the condition under which the stratified random sampling is applied is, the population must be heterogeneous and in order to ensure homogeneity, we divide the entire population to different strata. And the third method to be used for the selection of sample from the population is cluster sampling. The cluster sampling is applied only when the population is very large and at the same time the population is heterogeneous also. The entire population is divided into different groups here and each group 
is called a cluster. From a number of clusters we created in the population, we select recorded number of clusters at random, then all the units included in the selected clusters will become our sample size. And the next method is the multi stage random sampling. The multi stage random sampling is also applied when the population is very large. And here, the final selection of sample is based on different stages the researcher has to identify. So, for example, customer satisfaction of banks in Kerala. A large number of customers avail different banking services from different banks functioning in our state. Our sample size 1000. And how to select 1000 customers from a large number of customer base of different banks functioning in our state? Firstly, we divide the entire state into three regions, maybe south, central, and so north. From each region, we select one district to wander from Southern part, Ernakulam from central, Kannur from north. So, two stages are over. In the next stage, we select one bank from the public sector, then another bank from the private sector, and another bank from the new private sector. From the selected district, and from the selected bank, we select one branch at random. For each bank we already selected. And all the customers in that particular branch we selected. From the selected bank, from each region, constitute our subpopulation. And from the subpopulation, we select the required number of sample, say 1000 already fixed proportionately. So, a big population, a large population is subdivided into a small population by passing through different stages. From the subpopulation we identified, we select required number of sample. So, so, this is the application of multi stage random sampling. So, another method coming under the head probability sampling is systematic random sampling. So, here the first unit is selected at random and the remaining units are selected at regular intervals. Say, so for example, 1500, the total number of units included in the population, our sample size 300. Therefore, the class interval is 1500 divided by 300 is equal to 5. We select one unit at random from the list available, and the first unit we selected is possibly the ninth unit. The second unit we will select is 9 plus 5, 14. The third one we select possibly 14 plus 9, 19. Likewise, we select all the 300 samples at regular intervals. So, this is the application of systematic random sampling. And theoretically, the quarter sampling and number sampling coming under non probability sampling, but if we fix quota for a particular group, such a quota samples may be selected at random from the non population, then we can say that the quota sampling is coming under probability sampling. Similarly, in the snowball sampling, if we select the first sample at random, 
and the second sample is selected based on the information furnished by the first sample. Then we can say that the stop ball sampling is also coming under the head probability sampling. But there are judgment sampling, convenience sampling, purposive sampling and all these techniques are applied based on the discretion and also the judgment of the researcher in a particular case. The second part of my lecture is what is sample size determination. Sample size determination is the mathematical estimation of the number of subjects or units to be included in our study. So, there is a question what is your optimum sample size? And optimum sample size is determined for the following reasons to allow for appropriate analysis and also we require certain degree of accuracy in our results and at the same time we want to get validity of some significant test. So, for that purpose we require or we fix optimum sample size. So, what is the consequence of large sample size? Possibly the study will be difficult and costly, time is another constraint and sometimes if we fix larger sample size there is a possibility of loss of accuracy. Therefore, optimum sample size must be determined at the time of the selection of sample from the population. So, what is the procedure for calculating sample size? There are four procedures that could be used for calculating sample size. Use of formula, different formulas are available. Sometimes ready made tables are available for the fixed section of optimum sample size. Nomograms are available and sometimes we can use the computer software, different computer software is available in the market for the determination of optimum sample size. So, what are the basis for determining the optimum sample size? I have already mentioned specification of a precision level. We need 100 percent accuracy in our result therefore, we need optimum sample size to be fixed. And specification level of confidence, we need highest percentage of confidence in our result. Definitely we need optimum sample size and sometimes the likelihood of rejecting the null hypothesis when the null hypothesis is false or we need some power for the rejection of null hypothesis, there is a need for optimum sample size. So, in order to fix the optimum sample size for our study, we need the behavior of the population parameter. So, how to identify the behavior of the population? The movement of the population the only method for identifying the behavior of the population is pilot study or pilot survey. Sometimes we can use the result of previous survey, otherwise there will be an intelligent guess by the researcher. So, out of these three pilot study or pilot survey is the appropriate method for predicting the behavior of the population or identifying the movement of the population from where we select the sample for our study. And finally, sample size determination is one of the most essential components of every research in social science. The larger the sample, the higher the degree of accuracy, but this is the limit by the availability of resources and it can be determined by using formula. Sometimes ready made tables are available, nomograms are available and we can use the computer software for a fixed section of optimum sample size. But I should say there are different formulas 
for the fixation of optimal sample size for our research study. And out of the n number of formulas available, Cochran's formula is the most valid formula. And here, the optimal sample size is determined by Z square PQ divided by E square. So, here we use the value of Z, the real value of Z at a 5 percent level or 1 percent level of significance. And another formula is Z score formula. Here the optimal sample size is Z score table value of Z at a 5 percent or 1 percent level of significance square into standard deviation into 1 minus standard deviation divided by margin of error square and this formula is called Z score formula. So, another formula this is the analytical approach for the determination of sample size sample size equation one child n is equal to Z alpha plus Z beta square into sigma square divided by d square. So, another formula for the determination of sample size is Z score square into standard deviation into 1 minus standard deviation divided by confidence interval. But the most important and reliable formula for the fixation of sample size is 1.96 yes divided by d square and this formula is based on the information we collected through pilot study. So, what is the need for the pilot study or pilot survey? The very basic aim of conducting the pilot study or pilot survey is to identify the behavior of the population from where we draw the sample for our study. So, pilot study clearly indicates the behavior of the population based on the information we obtained from the pilot study we can apply this formula. Therefore, this formula is the most reliable for formula for the determination of the optimum sample size. Why? Because it considers the data collected through pilot study and the pilot study indicate the behavior of the population from where we draw our samples. So, here the formula is 1.96 standard deviation divided by d square. So, we can up determine the optimal sample size based on the data collected from pilot study and if we enter such data in the MS Excel software the spreadsheet of MS Excel we can calculate the mean the standard deviation and we can directly apply this formula for the optimum sample size needed for our study. So, from my experience I should say that this is the most valid formula statistical formula for the fixation of optimum sample size. So, thank you, thank you very much.